Venerable Tissa, who was content with whatever he had in terms of the four requisites. Before entering the monkhood, Venerable Tissa lived in a village not too far from the city of Sawati. After entering the monkhood, he continued to live in the same village. He delighted in solitude, where he spent most of his time practicing meditation. He did not like being away from the village, not even for attending the grand merit-making events of King Pasendi Kosala and Anatta Pandika the millionaire. He was content to receive alms at the family home. He was thus referred to as Venerable Nigamatisa for the reason that he resided permanently in the village. Some time later, it was being said by the Buddhist monks at the Jetawan temple how Venerable Tissa got up early in the morning and spent all his time at the family home and could not be bothered to come to Savati to receive alms. Having known what was being said about Venerable Tissa, Samasam Buddha had Venerable Tissa fetched to the Jetawan temple. After he had arrived, Samasam Buddha asked if it was true that he spent most of his time at his family home. Venerable Tissa said that he only went to his family home to receive what food they had to offer him. He did not care about the quality of the food as long as he had enough food to sustain his body. It was the reason he did not come to Sawati. Samasambuddha sang Satu and said it was fitting that Venerable Tissa should be a disciple of his. Since it was the nature of every Bodhisattva and every Samasambuddha to be content with little. Samasambuddha then went on to recount a previous life history of his to the congregation. In one previous existence where Samasam Buddha had been reborn a red-breasted parakeet living in a fig tree by the bank of the Ganges. He was content to eat the figs from the tree. When all of the figs had been eaten, he was content to eat its leaves and bark. Unlike other birds that flew from one tree to another to feed, he was content to stay in the same tree. King Saka wished to test the parakeet's resolve, so he deployed his supernatural power to cause the fig tree to wither and die. The parakeet continued to feed on the different parts of the dead tree, thereby proving to King Saka of his resolve. King Saka decided to appear to the bird and asked why he was still living in the dead fig tree. The parakeet told him that the tree had been like a friend to him. King Saka then asked why he did not behave like other birds which fed on the fruits from different trees. The parakeet said that those birds only visited the trees for their fruits and that they were selfish and cared not for their own kind. King Saka asked the parakeet if he could be granted one request what that would be. The parakeet asked for the fig tree to produce leaves and fruits once again. King Saka granted his wish by causing the fig tree to become lush and productive once again. At the end of the story, Samasam Buddha praised Venerable Tissa for his contentment and said that it was how every Buddhist monk should behave. Such contentment had the power to lead the Buddhist monks to attain the path and fruit of Nibbana. At the end of Samasambuddha's words, Venerable Tissa was able to attain arahatship 
complete with the four branches of analytical knowledge.